Welcome to Ragnar's Roughnecks. I'm here today to teach you how to make an escape and evade mission in Arma 3 with only 5 mods. We are using the Sog Prairie Fire DLC, but that's simply because I like the map and I like the AI uh, that the North Vietnamese Army make for uh, being the hunters essentially. So let's dive right into it. Let's make it quick, short, and to the point. This is how you make an escape and evade mission that you and your friends can play and work on actually escaping. So first thing you want to do, you're going to open up a new scene or a new editor. I chose the Quezon map. This is one of my more favorite maps for it. It's not that big because Vietnam, walking around Vietnam, it takes a lot to get anywhere. So don't think you don't have to take up the whole map. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. So first things first, let's drop our players in. And I do like to start in one of the corners. So if we look at this little village up here, so the little village looks cool. Let's pick a hillside. This is good. This is actually really good. Let's drop some props in first. There we go. All right, so this is a good one. We're just gonna put a wrecked helo right up into that. We're gonna add a little bit of ambiance to it, okay? Now we're gonna make our blue four players. Uh, we're gonna have them be Mac V people. So obviously you can be whoever you want on whatever map you want, it all works the same, okay? So I like to not give them a ton of gear, so I tend to pick just regular old riflemen. So instead of Mac V, let's do. All right. So like I said, uh, I don't like to give a whole bunch of crazy things to them to start out with. So let's just drop one, two. If you want to make it easier for them and have them be in a squad, that way they'll see their little indicators. It really depends on how well your friends are going to do with this. So and always go in, check the box for playable. If you're going to do this multiplayer, check the box for playable. Okay. Now that we've got those two down, we're going to go down here to this. Let's see, I know there's an airfield. There we go. Quezon Air Base. All right. It's an American Air Base, but you get the gist. All right. So we're going to use, we're actually going to use the NDA. So NDA infantry, rifle platoon, rifle squad, rifle squad two, recon team. Okay. So those are infantry elements. Now that we have those squads put together, we want to come in here and find their helicopters. The helicopters are a little goofy, I'll be honest, for the NVA. They get the job done. All right, so we're putting it down with no one in it, okay? And honestly, if you wanted to, you could actually turn, well here, here's another anti-personnel one. If you want to, you can pick the vehicles from any faction, and as long as you have them over here, with what I'm about to show you, they will still work for the Op 4. The Op 4 will actually pilot them, because what you need to do is you need to pick men. So, Helicopter, let's see, heli pilot right here, right? We're gonna set them to major. Okay, so that's gonna make that's gonna make him in the code of the way that the Drongo's population mod that we're using works. Um, that's gonna set him to be the pilot, set them to be the pilot, okay? 
And then what we're also going to do is we're going to take some infantry guys, uh, crewman driver. We're going to set them to be captain. Okay, because then they're then those are the ones that they spawn on the vehicles that we're going to put down as well. So tanks are probably a little overkill, especially like a flame tank. Um, you might get away with a PT-76 Bravo, but I, I would say stick with cars and APCs. So, like this. The 111s, transports. Let's see. Let's see what they have. Cars. Here we go. This is always a funny one to see because it looks like a civilian car. It looks like a civilian car from far away, but it's got it's got one of the DP machine guns mounted in it. Not a ton of ammo on it, but it's it's a fun one to run into while you're out there. See. All right, let's give them give them some sixty millimeter mortars. Give them some low dishkas, high RPD. All these turrets are important. Um, spider holes are fun having your running into spider holes it's crazy so all right that's a pretty good start and actually what we can do too believe it or not plane all right so we'll do a close air support mig right there because now every now and then fast movers the fast movers can it sounds ridiculous but the fast movers can spot you and the ai will send people to hunt you down so now that we have our op 4 army all set here like this i know it kind of looks goofy but it's the way that the systems work so now we're hitting here we're defined faction so this we're going to name them nba faction side east Okay, and so here's where you go into this piece by piece and what you're doing with the nut the two numbers represent is the minimum number of squads and the maximum number of squads so if you're hosting locally go based off of what your computer can handle with your friends connecting if you're using a dedicated server or something a little bit beefier feel free to, to turn this up um, but what I'll say is don't get too crazy with it because in the escape and evade we're going to we're actually going to focus on just a few of these we're not going to use all of them however on any of the capture the island missions that we do we use we really go through this whole number and we beef it up a lot all right so squad size three to nine i actually like to change this to five to ten vehicle group size one to three patrols one to three deep patrols vehicle patrols roadblocks all right Escape and evade. They're gonna have roadblocks up. So let's do five to ten. Garrisons two to five. Statics four to six. Camps three to seven. Helicopters. So look, zero to two. So this means there may be no helicopters, right? But we want them. So we're gonna do five to ten. Well, I want helos everywhere. I want it actually feeling like they're hunting them down because they will be. Planes, let's do two to four. Drones, we're not using any drones, so zero, zero. Compounds, we'll do one to three. All right, so hunters, infantry and hunters vehicle. This is the key point to your uh, escape and evade. These are squads that always know the rough area of where the where the enemy is okay so these are the people that are actively hunting you down you could be in the most remote part of the jungle 
they will actively be hunting you down. So we're gonna really crank this number up. We're gonna have this be seven to 12, and that's squads, okay? Hunter vehicles. So these are vehicle mounted patrols that have a rough idea of where you are and they're trying to hunt you down as well. We're gonna do that one five to 10. Occupied towns, occupied town patrols, garrisons. Okay, so passenger chance. This is where if you have like logistics and supply trucks and things like that, where they have room for carrying infantry, if you leave this at zero, they're not gonna have they're not gonna have anybody on there. So change that to one. Passenger count four to nine. And I like to leave passengers join group on false. What that means is the crew for the vehicle and the infantry are going to be two separate squads, okay? Spawn delay, zero, debug faction, generate report about which units are being used in which role, okay? So here we go. So this is it. This is what we're looking like, okay? So we're gonna hit, okay. And we have now defined our faction. Now we, when we wanna choose the AO that we're gonna be in, that's where we're gonna put the core module from the Drongo's map population. Um, I know I've said it a couple times, but I want to just directly address it now. This is the mod that makes it happen, okay? So Drongo's map population, put the core kind of in the center of where you want it to be, all right? So put that there, and now see, look, debug mode true, area rate is 3,000. This is 3,000 meters, so three kilometers essentially, AO shape, circle, or square, remote distance all right remote sizes so this is all helping to make basically what this is is this is saying where we're going to start putting things and where we're going to put it okay so fps rescan all right so we have our core down we have this down so now now the next thing that we're going to go down to is keep scrolling down this list. I mean, you can see this this module, Jungle's map population. You can build entire maps of everything you potentially ever want to do. Okay, so uh, skill. So this is the AI skill. This one doesn't really matter where you put. I still just put it by core, just to help it. All right. So skill side faction east skill level low and now this is where you can change their aiming accuracy so look at this their aiming accuracy is 0.01 so this is going to give you better firefights without the ai just picking you off immediately which is the big thing that people look for and struggle with all right <coughs> excuse me all right so now that we have the skill one down dynamic weather attributes Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so this is as simple as it is. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put here on Hickory Hill. We're just gonna put a helicopter up here. It can seem lazy, but I promise you, depending on how your friends are, it's better to just put a helicopter helo up here, okay? Let's do air cap, empty, put it up on the hill. All right, so now, on the map, we're gonna draw on it, right? And that's really, the barbed wire makes it really clustered here. And I never, I never just put it out right. Possible, evac, vehicle. Okay, oh, we want that. And I like to make it something bright so it pops, right? That red really pops. Now, so now we have, we have that. It's simple as that, it's done, possible evac. Now we need a trigger to end the mission, right? 
So we're going to take a trigger. What we're going to do is we're going to drop it here on this town. We're going to open it up. We're going to make it a, a square. We're going to have size A be 700, size B be 50. All right, see how it's that long like that? It covers pretty much this whole area, right? We're just going to put it here on the edge of the map. And now, type and number one, activation blue four present. Okay? So that what that is, is once blue four crosses this line, they win. Mission's over, they won. So now we're going to put another marker here. And we're gonna we're gonna put a little ambush symbol we're gonna make this green we're gonna type here evac route okay and if you want to be if you want to be nice to your friends you can copy it and let them know that hey you've got a couple of options and what you can do too, so we've got a little outpost here, right? Let's let's give them an objective so they're not just escaping and evade. Let's give them an actual objective too. So right here, we're gonna take a anti-aircraft gun. I like this one. And we're just gonna drop that in right there. Put another one down here. And we'll put a you know another one this way. Okay. Now we mark on the map. Change the color to something you know bright and important. So red is a good one. So now they know that if they want to fly, they got to take care of that enemy AA position. Okay. And to save you a bunch of headaches and from a bunch of people yelling at you, go to attributes, go into your multiplayer. All right. And you'll see respawn. It shows here is disabled. All right. We want to, uh, you have two ways to do this. Okay. There's two ways to do this. You can do respawn disabled, mission fail when everyone is dead. Okay? And with that, revive mode, enable for all players, require trait none, required items none. It's gonna be easier this way. All right? Keep your revive duration as low as possible. Okay? And if you want to give them a respawn on position of death, you can always give them respawn tickets here. I usually don't. When everybody dies, they die. That's kind of how that's kind of how I treat it. So now that we've done that, all right, we can do a dynamic environment if we want, but that's really just a lot of extra load on your server. And we still have core in debug mode. So that's gonna show us on the map where everything is. So let's play this now in multiplayer. All right, and we're just gonna load it on a LAN. Doesn't matter, but if you wanna play with response, essentially, you gotta do it. I'm gonna disable the AI player, so it's just gonna be me. And we should be 90% done. This is where we do our quality check, okay? Now look at this, Vietnam. We're not anywhere on the map, but look how good this looks, all right? Possible evac vehicle, enemy AA position, and it shows our evac routes, right? So we're gonna hit continue and load in. All right, so here we are. Here's our wrecked helo. And if we look here on the map, You can see it popped all these areas, right? 
roadblocks, patrols. And let's see, possible evac. Eight point three kilometers. There you go. Eight point three kilometers that way. All right. And so, look at that. I already hear. I hear a jet. And look, so here's one of the hunter units right here. They know where I am already. It's a high value target. High value target, statics, roadblocks, hunter vehicles, another vehicle, plane, helos. So let's see how far we are from this static unit because I think I put us in this general area. We're a kilometer that way from it. This roadblock, 2.1 kilometers. So if you watch this map, you'll see these squads that say hunt. They're moving my way. They're absolutely moving my way. And depending on where you start, and there's a MIG. How cool is that? Right? It's out, it's, it's out patrolling. We didn't give it any waypoints. We didn't have to do anything with it. All we did was use this Drongo's mod, uh, map population mod. That is it. And as we come into contact with enemy patrols and things like that, the hunter squads will move in and get closer as they get updated. All the AI are connected via one commander and they're relaying information back based on your position. So now you have built a escape and evade mission in Arma 3. Simple as that. The Arma 3 Eden Editor is still one of the most underrated game tools of all time, I think. This game came out in 2013. It's 2024. It's amazing. And don't get me started on Reforger. It's starting to look better and starting to do better, but it still can't hold a candle to Arma 3. I've got almost 20, I have over 2,600 hours in Arma 3. A lot of it is spent here in the editor making missions for my friends. If you're ever interested in joining them with us, uh, link to the Discord is down below. And there's an Arma 3 role that you can grab so that way you get updated when our missions take place. All right? But that's it. That's all it took. And it's different every time. If we were to drop back now and reload in, it would be randomized again and we can make adjustments based on what we saw right so we saw that we were still a little far starting out here we were a little far out from it right but what if i started us right here on this little peninsula and we, and we load in <clears throat> no coding no scripting no nothing the mod does it all for you basically all right so we're right here on this little peninsula Let's load in and let's see where the AI ends up. Oh, look at that. It even moved our wrecked helo. Just by clicking and dragging, I caught the helo in it too. So that town is 128 meters behind us. There's gonna be AI. There's gonna be AI spawning right on top of us. And see, once again, it's all starting to spawn in different locations that it did that time. And you can take this. You can take this, copy and paste it, and move it to any map, any factions, anything you want to do. You can absolutely do it. If you want to give the North Vietnamese uh, modern equipment I'm trying to find this helicopter real quick I hear it there it is I 
think they spotted me. So we're right here. Hunt patrol here. Helo's here. Hunt, helo, helo, helo. That's it. That's all it takes, guys. And you're gonna have you'll have so much fun with it. You can make it as crazy and as intense as you want, or you can make it more mission based. It's all it's completely up to you. So, but that's it. It's as simple as that. One of the things I'm really trying to do is show people here in 2024 how powerful this game and the engine still is. That was with the Vietnam DLC, but you can do it with any mods. You can use any of the modded factions. Basically, if you can download it and install it on there, you can use it and make an escape and evade out of it. If you want to do an escape and evade in Chinaris, you want to do, and you want to use zombies as the hunters, you can make yourself a zombie escape and evade mission. It's not difficult to do. It's it's exactly, just follow the exact steps that I just showed you guys. So the mod, the main mod that you need is Drongo's map population. The five mods that I currently have on while we're working on this is you have to have CBA A3. That's required for pretty much anything. It's community-based add-ons. AI avoids prone. This keeps the AI at least kneeling or standing when you're in a firefight. They don't just lay down behind cover and stay laying down. Remove stamina. When you're doing long foot patrol missions like this, no one wants to have to worry about stamina. And if your guys are really swaying their rifles everywhere, the people in your mission are going to complain. I promise you. Uh, Eden Enhanced, which adds more tools to the Eden Editor. And the most important one, Drongo's Map Population. I'll have a list of all of them in the description. If this tutorial has helped you at all, please help me for free by subscribing the channel, giving it a like, leaving a comment. All this does is help me spread my information and my knowledge to more people that are interested in this. And it costs you nothing except a little bit of time and a click of the mouse. So thanks again. And, but, you know, thanks again. That's all I can say. Thanks again for checking this out. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions about it, drop them in the comments below. And uh, if you're interested in doing a live streaming session where I teach everyone in the stream how to make these missions, please comment down there below. Because if I have enough interest, I'll absolutely put it together and we'll probably make five or six missions. It's, I truly enjoy it, and it's one of my favorite things to do. That's why I have almost 2,700 hours in the game. So thanks again for everything, guys. And, of course, always, welcome to the Roughnecks.